A warm summer night like the one we're going to have tonight can be perfect for stargazing unless there's too much light pollution. Like other kinds of pollution, there's a very simple fix for light pollution. Tonight, environmental reporter David Schechter takes us to one of the darkest places on Earth. So this is a park that's like very close to my house. And I'm out here looking for stars. I think I see one star. Light pollution comes from excessive artificial light that causes the sky to glow. And new research in the journal Science found because of light pollution, the night sky is getting 10% brighter every year. What is lost when you look up and you can't see what everybody else, every other generation saw, except for ours? In order to see what's really up there, you gotta leave the city lights behind and get to some pretty remote places. I'm talking the middle of nowhere kind of places. This is the McDonald Observatory in far west Texas. For maximum drama, I like to open this door. <laughs> That's where astronomer Stephen Janowicki works. Stephen to Amy, we are heading onto the dome floor. Yeah, drama. <laughs> That's right. You aren't lying. Amy, can we go back to uh, north for the structure, please? We can walk around. He's got like a magic radio where it's just like <laughs> he can move this giant telescope with his radio. The Hobby Eberly Telescope, operated by the University of Texas, is the largest of its kind in the world. At night, it collects the light from outer space on its very large mirror. Why is darkness so essential to the work? We are trying to catch the, the light, the little particles of life that come from the farthest corners of the universe sometimes uh, and have traveled uh, unthinkable distances to get here. And, and why do we need to know this? When I told my grandfather I was going to be an astronomer, he said, why don't you be a pediatrician like your cousin? <laughs> and it was the same question. But I, I think we need to know because it's a, it's a fundamental human pursuit of trying to learn new things. Uh, it's the same question of why we make art or why we you know, do, it, do anything that doesn't have a, a product that comes out of it. You know, we are trying to understand the universe. And that job is getting harder. This is a light pollution map of the United States. Check out the eastern half of the country where there are now very few places left that are not light polluted. If the sky got too bright, eventually there would be no point in building big telescopes on the ground at all. Honestly, I think a lot of people come here for the telescopes, but leave to just remembering the naked eye experience the most. Yeah, right, because yeah. you get so much, right? It's everything all yeah. at once. Yeah. Protecting the night sky here is the job of astronomer Stephen Hummel. I always forget to bring chairs. Stephen is giving me my own private tour of the major constellations in the sky. There's so much up there. This, what a beautiful night. Uh, it's perfect, and the, the detail in the Milky Way is remarkable, I mean, and then to the right of it, we have one of my favorite constellations, one of the easiest to recognize, uh, which is Scorpius. Oh, yeah, it's the first time I've ever seen that. It's, I can totally see that. Yeah, it's easy to recognize. Yes, that's amazing. We have the stinger at the two little stars. We've got the curve. Stephen says the biggest reason we're losing the night sky is the rapid adoption of brighter, whiter LED street lights. They both flood the sky with wasted light and reflect light off the ground. And that makes the sky glow. They're more efficient. Right. They, they, they save energy. You know, they become very cost effective. Um, but the most common kinds you see, the sort of bright white ones, are absolutely making the problem much worse. What are the reasons to preserve this? Why well, preserve the night sky? Um, I would just be heartbroken if future generations couldn't enjoy this the way we are now. Uh, imagining a future without that is, is bleak to me. Um, and it's increasingly the reality. How many people never get to see this? And light pollution is not just a stargazing problem. Research shows it can interrupt our sleep cycle, leading to health issues like certain cancers and heart problems. It's also a major factor in the decline of insect populations, which require darkness to navigate 
and it contributes to the death of hundreds of millions of birds each year that fly into brightly lit buildings. To protect these stunning views in the Big Bend region of Texas, the observatory helped establish the largest dark sky reserve in the world. It relies on nearby communities to swap out their white LED streetlights for amber ones that don't scatter as much light up into the sky and installing covers that point the light down. Wow, that's it. So this that's was, it. You, you've switched this out. This was a different fixture. That's right. Chris Ruggia is the director of tourism for the nearby city of Alpine, Texas, a place that visitors stay when they come to see the dark night sky. This is our product, you know, is the experience of coming here. And if we want that to continue to, you know, provide some kind of prosperity to the community, we have to take care of it. The city council unanimously passed an ordinance in 2021 regulating outdoor lighting. Nearly all of the city's 200 streetlights have been updated, and the ordinance gives all businesses and homes five years to convert to dark sky friendly lighting or face a daily fine of $50. Now, what's it like to tell people that they must make some sort of change essentially to their home and their business? You're asking a lot there. There's going to be some conversations that aren't that aren't easy, especially as the uh, as the time limit runs out. Digging around in the dark. So what I'm going to set up is called an all sky photometer to measure the progress on reducing light pollution. Stephen Hummel is rigging up a special camera. We're finding the canaries in the coal mine, so to speak, uh, about the, where it's growing on the horizon, uh, where it could eventually extend high enough to impact where our, our telescopes are looking. His measurements show the plan across the dark sky reserve is working. There's been a 20% reduction in nighttime light pollution since 2020. And he says it's not just small communities that can make a big impact. Big cities like Los Angeles, Chicago, and Phoenix are all swapping out their overly bright streetlights for ones that are dark sky friendly. The problem really isn't money, it isn't infrastructure really, it's, it's awareness. Light pollution is completely reversible. Um, it's one of the few kinds of pollution that you could solve immediately if, if you wanted to. You could flip a switch and fix the problem. To come out here, and see a true dark sky is to make you understand, I think, a little bit about what it means to be a human being and how small our existence is. This is something definitely worth saving. So what does light pollution look like here in Boston? Well, the white and red on this map show the most intense light pollution. It lessens, obviously, the farther away you go from the city in those bright lights. But if you really want to see the stars, you need to go about five hours away to Katahdin Woods and Waters National Monument in Maine. That is the closest designated international dark sky sanctuary near us. And there's a real emphasis all over the country to protect those areas. When you see the blanket of stars, you really notice the difference. That's right. Why it is so worth saving.